Welcome to your Algebra 2 Lesson 1.7 video. Today we're going to solve absolute value equations and inequalities. So that's the objective. You will solve absolute value equations and inequalities. Just as a reminder, um, the absolute value of a number x written as, and you can see there's two little lines on either side of the x, is the distance the number is from 0 to the number line. Interpreting absolute value equations. When your equation reads absolute value of x equals k, it can be rewritten as absolute value of x minus 0 equals k, and it means the distance between x and 0 is k. For the equation absolute value of x minus b equals k. This means the distance between x and whatever b is, is k units. Use these steps to solve an absolute value equation, absolute value of ax plus b equals c, where c is greater than zero. Number one, write two equations, ax plus b equals c, or negative ax plus b equals c. And that's because for any distance, there's going to be two values that have that distance from b. You're going to solve each equation, and then you're going to check each solution in the original absolute value equation. So the first example we have is we're going to solve x minus 5 equals 7. Or excuse me, we're going to solve the absolute value of x minus 5 equals 7. So we want to know what numbers are 7 units away from 5. That's what we want to know. And the way that we can go about doing that is we can take exactly what's in the absolute value bars, so x minus 5, and set that equal to 7. And then we can take the opposite of that expression and set it equal to 7. So we're going to have x minus 5 equals 7, or the opposite, or negative, quantity x minus 5 equals 7. And then we solve each of those statements separately. For x minus 5 equals 7, we just add 5 to both sides to get x equals 12. For negative quantity x minus 5 equals 7, we distribute the negative to get negative x plus 5 equals 7. And then we subtract 5 from both sides to get negative x equals 2. And then we divide both sides by negative 1 and get x equals negative 2. So we have two potential solutions, x equals 12, x equals negative 2. Now we want to go ahead and put those solutions back into our absolute value statement. And so when we check, we've got absolute value of 12 minus 5 equals 7, absolute value of 7 does equal 7, and so 7 equals 7, that one works out. Then we go over, we check our other solution, and we plug in negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 minus 5 is absolute value of negative 7. Absolute value of negative 7 does equal 7, and so we end up with 7 equals 7, because negative 7 is 7 units away from 0. So the absolute value of negative 7 is 7. So both of our solutions work. And so 12 and negative 2 are the solutions because they are each 7 units away from 5. And so 12, negative 2 are our two solutions. That notation there is called solution set notation. And it would be great if you would use it. For example 2, we're going to solve absolute value of 5x minus 10 equals 45. Okay, again, we're going to have them break that down into two statements. We're going to have 5x minus 10 equals 45 or the opposite of 5x minus 10 equals 45. So negative quantity 5x minus 10 equals 45. And we'll just solve each equation on its own and then test each solution. So we're going to add 10 to both sides for our first equation for 5x minus 10 equals 45 and that's going to give us 5x equals 55. For the second equation, we need to distribute that negative, so that's going to give us negative 5x plus 10 equals 45. For our first equation, we would divide both sides by 5, and that gives us x equals 11. For our second equation, we would subtract 10 from both sides, and that gives us negative 5x equals 35. And now we need to divide that one by negative 5, and we get x equals negative 7. 
At this point, we're going to check our two solutions. So, remember, you always go back to the original equation. So, we have absolute value of 5 times 11 minus 10. We want to know if that equals 45. 5 times 11 is 55. So, we have absolute value of 55 minus 10 equals 45. 55 minus 10 is 45. So, we have absolute value of 45 equals 45. We keep simplifying that left-hand side. The absolute value of 45 is indeed 45. So we end up with the true statement. 45 does equal 45. Then we go back and we do the same process substituting in negative 7 for x. So if you move over to the right there, we've got absolute, absolute value of 5 times negative 7 minus 10 equals 45. 5 times negative 7 is negative 35. So we have the absolute value of negative 35 minus 10 equals 45. Negative 35 minus 10 is negative 45. The absolute value of negative 45 equals 45. Well, that's true because the absolute value of negative 45 is indeed 45. And so our second solution checks as well. And so we have two solutions, 11 and negative 7. Now, we can pick up extraneous solutions. When you solve an absolute value equation, it is possible for a potential solution to be extraneous. This means that the potential solution does not give you a true statement when plugged back into the original equation. So you have to check your potential solutions always for absolute value equations. Even if I don't tell you to, for absolute value equations, you always check both your solutions, even if the instructions don't tell you to, because sometimes only one will work. Sometimes neither work. Sometimes both work. So you need to make sure you plug them in. So we're going to solve absolute value of 2x plus 12 equals 4x, and we're going to check for extraneous solutions. The basic procedure is still the same. We still have potentially two solutions for this. You copy what's exactly inside the absolute value bars, and then you do the opposite. So we've got 2x plus 12 equals 4x, or the opposite, so negative quantity 2x plus 12 equals 4x, and then we solve each one. Now, on for our first equation, we can go ahead and subtract 2x from both sides to give ourselves 12 equals 2x, because 4x minus 2x is 2x. On the right-hand equation, we do need to distribute that negative, just like always, so we've got negative 2x minus 12 equals 4x. We'll do the next step of work. Um, for 12 equals 2x, we need to divide both sides by 2, and so we get 6 equals x. On the right-hand side, for that equation, we would um, want to add 2x to both sides, and so we get negative 12 equals 6x. And then we're going to divide both sides by 6 to get negative 2 equals x. Now, we need to check each of these two solutions. So we plug in this 6 and into the original equation, and so we get absolute value of 2 times 6 plus 12 equals 4 times 6. 2 times 6 is 12, so we've got absolute value of 12 plus 12 equals 4 times 6 is 24. Inside our absolute value bars, we can simplify there. 12 plus 12 is 24. Absolute value of 24 is 24. Oops, excuse that. And so that solution works. On the right-hand side, we've got, uh, for that equation, we've got the absolute value of 2 times negative 2, because we're plugging in negative 2 for x, plus 12 equals 4 times negative 2. So 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus 12 is 8. On the right-hand side of that equation, we have 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So we've got absolute value of 8 equals negative 8. Well, when we simplify absolute value of 8, it's just plain old 8. It's 8 units away from 0. So 8 does not equal negative 8. So this is an example of an extraneous solution. Negative 2 doesn't work when we plug it back into the original equation. So we have only one solution of 6. Okay, that's it for video one. We'll come back in video two and talk about solving an absolute value inequality.